Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Frankfurt Major Qualifiers. We're in the EU Division playoff action here in the Winner Bracket Final. It's Winner's Finals right now as we watch NIP take on Monkey Business. And Kyle Guy, that's Winter, that's Lyrical. Gentlemen, pretty uh, interesting game number one. Monkey Business had a solid game plan all around the precious greed of this alchemist. It seemed like it was no stopping him, and NIP, disastrous start. They were tenacious. They held their own for a bit, but it was not enough. We'll have to see what the game plan is going to be in game number two. And taking a look at it already, we did see a couple of bands. Not the Elusive Alchemist, though. That is going to be a Shadow Fiend first pick for Nuc Monkey Business. That went into Nip picking Queen of Pain and him, Alchemist, followed by the Undying. So a little things changing on up this time around. We're going to see if Nip are going to be able to run it. I will mention real quickly that uh, I think... I was thinking at first that it was Shadow Fiend for Nip that they picked Giant. up because they're 8-0 oh on that hero, but instead, I'm going to see the Alchemist on uh, on them instead. It's interesting that you know Monkey Business invests their first pick on a Shadow Fiend. Just, Raid, Raid it's Raiding Shadow, Shadow Fiend, yeah. which, is, which is fine, but they themselves pass on Alchemist, so it's like, I wonder if they're like, NIP are probably going to take Alchemist. We know how to handle an Alchemist, so let's do our anti-alchemist lineup now boom and then, then that's where it can, it's going to begin now yeah the first two picks are really aggression already you want to take the aggression to towards the alchemist mainly you, you want to push and you want to take his tower so mm -hmm. sf very good at dominating the alchemist in the lane has very good damage to actually deny all the creeps this is where we might see that yeah. jakiro pop in definitely yeah I mean, they want to be able to siege and push objectives before Al can be a problem. Well, this is the game where NIP might also want to consider the Venom pick, which Monkey Business like to run a lot. Oh. Because Venom plus Alchemist, you want to slow the game down, yeah. drag with the wards and Acid Spray, very good base defense. So that might be a pick that NIP would want to go to with their lineup. Alternatively, you could go for something like the uh, the Ancient Apparition for Monkey Business mm -hmm. and combo that with the Venom if they're able to get it themselves. Oh, Certainly a possibility. Good, good ban. I think Meepo is very good versus Elk if you want to control him in the early stages of the game. Very good at catching the Elk when he's trying to farm because you can spread your Meepos all over the place and try to catch him out. does mean that heroes like Brood are not going to be banned. Though Darkseer's been banned out. Oh, they... Do you think they could but creep an in? And NIP, NIP doesn't play Brood. What about Monkey Business, though? Yeah, Monkey Business, they do play Brood on Moon Meander. But he, I, I, I think he doesn't play it as he's like one of his main heroes. Like when you look at Empire, uh, s no, sorry, not Empire, like Max, Team mm -hmm. Vega, mm -hmm. they like to pick Brood right away. So different teams like differentiate between what they want to prioritize. Wouldn't you think top. Alchemist, though, might be pretty good against Brood? Acid yeah. Spray, easy gold, though. It that would be well. really yeah. bold. They, like, you would have to be very confident in your micro and everything Radiant else if, that we were gonna, so if that's what you're going to do. Even more base defense. Radiant team. Yeah, we are trying better. to push with Undying. We're just going to mess up on our base defense. Why not get, like, Treon Protector, then? And an Ogre. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Lich. Put armor on the towers. Put last the towers. Armor Blood the towers. towers. Armor the towers. Do everything you Lich. can. <laughs> That's the next three picks. Yeah, Lich. definitely. <laughs> I think Lich has my favorite hero line when you buy wards. Mm, wards. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the only hero gets hyped about buying wards. I yeah. love it. So excited. It teaches new players how to play. It's one of the best heroes <laughs> for that. It's like, wards are a good thing. Do it, guys. But then why do they always only get wards? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Serious? Yeah, oh yeah, I feel like it. I think Lich can be pretty easy. I think mode. Venge. You think Venge? Venge also. Venge is pretty you easy. You can swap at a pretty bad time. Chain Frost is just like, oh, there's a fight. Throw it out there. Hope and to God. If you're playing against bad players, it's all of a sudden like, <laughs> I just killed everybody. It's so wonderful. <laughs> and Sacrifice is just a. <laughs> oh, no I got problem. a bowl over here. Um, <laughs> A sacrifice is like the, it's like a no-brain ability that could give you easy lane dominance as well. And so would you know? There's the Jakiro for their sieging lineup. Mr. Dragon Time. I like this one a lot, and I'm wondering how they're gonna actually lane this. You know, you do on, often sometimes see him played in a off lane role on his own a long time ago, but it seems like it could be a really mm. strong Mon lane if you ran. Monkey it Business has always run the Jakiro as their support position on creep. Okay. Every time they picked it. Now, NIP, do you think? Era is going to be playing this Alchemist. It won't be a mid lane Alchemist, I don't think. Five right? Or do you think that they. Safe lane Alchemist is fine, I think. So are they going to go aggressive on side of Monkey Business to punish the Alchemist then? They could do like Undying Jakiro together or Undying a plus one together. Mm -hmm. Depending on how they want to run the Undying, because they at this point they could still run Undying as a support hero on Fly and mm -hmm. they go for another hero on Moon Meander. So I could see it happening, but they, they have options. They still have options open. NIP, more base defense, question mark. Venomancer is still there. <laughs> yeah. Venom wards are good for base defense. Certainly. And al obviously we know Alchemist could feed him that. Yeah. Agnum Scepter if he has to be more of a support Venom. Of course. 
I like the Dazzle the band as well. The like, early, early Christmas presents. Mm. He was the only one that really I felt like had a, a, a great game last time was the uh, the Dazzle for Nip. And I, I mean, everybody else was playing pretty well throughout the whole course of it, but he was really having standout moments. But I moments. felt like in that game, they probably wanted a support that can actually push out the waves much yeah. more efficiently. <laughs> Dazzle's job was like buy wards and make sure your cores don't die and they keep speed pushing. I, I feel like Dazzle is much more suited in a position where you can keep fighting and keep using the heals and the graves. Mm. Ratting type of game, Dazzle feels like a non-factor. We're going to pass I mean, on something like a Venomancer and go with a Witch Doctor. Witch here. Doctor. Mm, Agnum's so candidate. In the yeah. uh, what they don't get from the Venomancer and Witch Doctor has is, I guess, oh, stun. Okay. Monkey business. Sustain, but... Their game plan is really clear, so... Like I mentioned, against the Alchemist, you don't try to upgrade him. You just try to finish the game and pressure as much as you can. And we saw the Juggernaut pick from Monkey Business before. I think it was the last series on Big Daddy. Mm. He went for the Max Blade Fury and the Healing Ward so that they can actually be Five more participative with the Juggernaut. And he keeps coming to fights with the Healing Ward plus the Max Spin. So mm -hmm. it could be something that Zero NIP time. needs to watch out for because they play it similar like a Gyrocopter coming into a fight with your Rocket Barrage. They do it on the Juggernaut. He's also really great, you know, the untarget ability there. Do you think that there's a chance that you could end up running into this with an aggressive trialing out of monkey business with mm. the Jakiro Juggernaut Undyne? I think less likely because you want to secure levels on Jakiro. That's the main thing. You want to get level 7 on Jakiro. You want to get level 7 on Undying. Then you push. So I think they're going to just split up the heroes across the map. Two heroes top, possibly. Mm -hmm. Two heroes bottom. You want to pull the lane really on the Jakiro. Maybe at some point, Juggernaut goes in the jungle so the Jakiro gets Five a lane or Juggernaut goes to Rome. So you get a lane for the Jakiro and you get levels on the Jakiro. Then you push, like one push with Mac on Shadowfin. Level 7 on Jakiro, level 7 on Undying and Juggernaut with his items, with his early items. Do we think that this is either the Undying or Jakiro could be Moon's hero or do you think this is probably the t two supports? And they I, would have I to think it's still okay for them to actually run Jack, uh, like Undying and Jakiro as both their supports but at the same time Undying off lane is still fine for me. It depends on what is remaining on the pool. Well, Night Stalker is also still yeah. out there. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Looking at the off lane pool, what is actually remaining? Uh, off lane pool? Tusk, Duxia, Clock. Doom. Phoenix. Broodmother. <laughs> Legion Commander. Nah, none of those actually fit <laughs> into like a pushing type of lineup. Pushing lineup, offliner. Um, Pugna. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard to say. Old school universe Jakiro offlane. <laughs> they might try that. I, think that. Hmm. I don't know if they actually want to go... Like one hero I feel might actually fit for their lineup is if they want to play fast, it's probably Enigma. And you huh. have to put Undying on offlane. I mean, we don't get to see many Enigma picks, but... Well, the Phoenix is actually banned by Monkey yeah, Business. By Monkey right. Business. Because That's they are actually looking to push early. And NIP has Wyvern. When you're pushing early, you're afraid of facing a lineup which has very heavy team fight composition. Witch Doctor, Phoenix Ultimate, Wyvern Ultimate, Queen Ultimate. Those four could be a really tough problem for Monkey Business when they're trying mm. to push. So overall, very solid last ban from Phoenix. Ooh. I like that one potentially. And they go for the Lich. So maybe a dual Whoa, Lich, here. Lich Undying. Yep. Yeah. Frost what? Armor. This is pretty terrifying. Well, They're going to solidify the laning phase of the Undying. Make sure that... And maybe the Lich could also be potentially getting the mech if they don't want to get the mech on Shadowfin. But I think that's very unlikely. It's still going to be a mech on Shadowfin. And Lich is just going to be, oh, I'm just going to get all the wards and crit will be... You, yeah. can, you can get your Yules, you can get your Tranquils, whatever. Lich is like, I'm just here for the early mm. game. I'll get the wards. Yeah, and, and more importantly, sacrifice. pressure to the Alchemist. Lich yeah. and Undying. It's very good pressure for the Alchemist. Well, going to keep up the dual offlane strategies that we've been seeing more and more often with these patches that have been coming up and being able to apply pressure to alchemists in a way that doesn't always get happening with uh, just taking away the creeps. You can't last hit them if they're not there. All right, here we go. It's going to be match number two of the series. Monkey Prepare Business going against that. NIP. Monkey Business got the game one win here. Already Hanskin is quick in to see that fly. Wanted to plant down some wards, but that ain't happening. But... It's now just monkey business, one win away from securing their trip to Frankfurt. The loser of this series will be going down to the lower bracket to face Alliance in the lower bracket final. And you don't want to be stuck going against Alliance. We've seen that they are a very cheeky, crafty team and will fight to the end to get their win. Absolutely. Tree simulator. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get to catch that game live. I went back and watched it and it was pretty foul. I definitely had to take a shower after I finished. <laughs> All right, though, NIP going to be trying to do the hmm. Alchemist setup you know, here. Are they going know, mid lane? You know, I wonder what no, no. what they will do. 
probably take the bounty run on Alchemist, but Alchemist goes safe lane, but Alchemist buys the bottle for the Queen of Pain. Oh yeah, we saw that last time around. I think they probably want to do that. Changing like course and gonna go to bottom here. I'm sure Monkey Business recognize how important this rune is going to be for NIP. Look at this. They're even gonna pull possibly a couple down there. No, they don't want to contest it anymore. They're gonna head back the other way. They just wouldn't have gotten there in time, I think. I think that they probably, if they were in position, would have wanted to, but Nip was there a little bit sooner and looks like Era's gonna be able to get this one. So, bottle for you, Queen of Pain. Let's see. Have fun. <laughs> it may be. I would definitely give her a, a big one up in this matchup against Miracle on his Shadow Fiend. So as the lanes do settle, it is going to be the Undying Lich combo. Uh, monkey Business do want to add pressure to the Alchemist so he can't have too easy of a time. Era's on his way up there now. He's going to be accompanied by Handskin, it looks like, on his Witch Doctor. Back at mid lane, Seal Kid is going to put some priority onto Lip early. And you're right, look at that. Bottle is going to go to Limp. A present from Era. Just when you think Aghanims is the only thing Alchemist can pull his team. Only <laughs> <laughs> levels, absolutely. So that's going to be a solo down here, at least for a little bit, until Jakiro gets into lane. Yamas and Fam up against Big Day, No Tail. And I'm going to see, I feel like probably the best course here is uh, the Blade Fury along with the Healing Ward seems like a really strong build that we've sort of consistently seen out of the Jug. And I think that, you know, the amount of sustain you're able to get there is just really, really impressive. I, I think that's what players have been going for as well because Juggernaut generally you have mana problems and the spells, as you scale it, it actually costs less mana on the Blade Fury. So allowing you to actually have more casts in the team fights. You can cast it more in the team fights. And the damage is better now too. Yeah, just, look, be the at new just thing. look at the freaking damage at level 4, 155 per second. For 5 seconds, it's like 700 damage. I've seen Jug go up to level 3 and then pass on the rest of it. <laughs> Just to, I don't mm, know, give him a he, little bit He went extra. for the max spin build when I watched him play Juggernaut. Like mm -hmm. So far, 6-2 and two on the Undyne. Top up there. He's been able to have a pretty decent time. Although the Alchemist has been able to get... Oh, oh they're committing on bottom lane. They got a good dual breath. And the spin will fly through and Jonas will go down. Good catch for them. Oh, he might oh, actually die. Might get this. punished here. Looks to go in a corner. Hides himself away. Hanskin wants to cut him off before he can eat his way through. Doesn't see him, though. Oh, now we'll commit back in. Looks like oh. here comes back the oh. Earthshaker. And oh. he's going to let him slip through. <laughs> the oh, Jukes. Big Daddy. <laughs> Hiding in the woods in the dark. He's able to slip through here. Jonas. Oh, Fissure. Really <laughs> wants to get the catch. Can he follow it up, though? He I don't does, think he so. Doesn't I think he's going to get away. He doesn't oh, have boots. Oh, oh he no, stopped. He what happened? He walked the wrong way. He got blocked. Pathing. Oh, no. Oh. Well, well, good for NAP. They get the redemption there. It's get still a lot that. of resources com committed for that kill. Yeah. So I think you're still fine if you're a monkey, monkey business right now. And looking at the mid lane, Queen of Pain has managed to secure a good amount of last hits ahead of the Shadow Fiend thanks to level 1 Arctic Burn coming in from his support. And so a bottle, so I'm sure helps a bit. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Definitely. And back for a fill right now. Let's go back to top lane here and see how it's going. Mm. Era is definitely suffering in terms of last hits from the Lich right oh, now. He's losing out that pesky Lich and his sacrifice. Well, and I like also being able to... He picked up the Ice Armor second there as well after the sacrifice. Oh, mid lane. Yeah. Queen of Pain getting fresh. Getting a bit of a trade. Handskin after doing that adventure to the bottom lane. Swings through mid and assists Limp and getting a pick off on Miracle. Top lane Moon Meander. Swing with the idea of... Wow, all the Venom undying. Don't yeah. see that every day. Wants to be really aggressive, like uh, Gabe mentioned. You get the ice armor against the Harris, and obviously it helps against the acid spray as well. You have that extra armor to take less damage from that. It's going to allow Moon Meander to play really aggressive on this offlane, the Lich. Right now you can already they see can it. kill this alchemist very easily if they get low. He's enough. committing for it, drops the tombstone, and just look at how slow the upper venom. Lovely. They're screwed. TP away, but no wow. time. Undying is just a monster down here. Does have soul rip. Just he was end up using that. And yeah, very very good item selection from the undying here. Moonmander definitely made the Orbal Venom pay off, big time. You know, level two that and just the takes overall strategy on the lane, the ice armor, the Orbal Venom, the game plan for that lane was really really solid yes. for Monkey Business. Got to give a, a nod towards the drafting setup for Monkey Business in that case. Absolutely. Oh, Hanskin gonna take a little bit more right click oh, damage. Kill him. Oh, oh he lives here now. Cross. Yeah, Moon's gone. Gets hit from the stun. Lim is always there when his, his team actually needs him on the Queen of Pain. We saw it in the first game and we see it again in the second game. Rotations are really good from Lim as usual. Mm -hmm. 
Did he he had Queen of Pain last time, didn't he? Yep. Yeah, playing it really well. I'm curious. It looks like he's already going for treads first. Pretty standard stuff there, not wanting to rush anything down. Do you think it's a an Ags game or if this is going to be one of mm. those Orchid ones? Orchid game could be good against Juggernaut. So I think that could be a good choice for him this, this game around. I'm wondering if the plan here out of Monkey Business is to try and sort of group up and fight as a big whole cluster of team, if it might be worth it to have that ulti off cooldown, but maybe that solo kill potential a little bit more important. Moomeander makes his return back to lane. Hanskin will continue to aid Era a bit because he will need it. On their return already, the aggression comes out, and he cannot get near the lane. I mean, lucky for him, he has Acid Spray, so he's hoping for some occasional last hits. Oh, he got that one. <laughs> Why is making him work for it, though? That's for sure. <laughs> He'll take every little scrap. Uh, Limp is over here with level 6. Trying to snoke on over here, see if she can take any stacks. But Shadowfiend doesn't actually have any at this mm. point. Place what placement again? He's going to... Different, a different ward placement compared to the usual ones because teams have been re getting really good at dewarding those yeah. wards. Like that, that's usually the spot, like right here. Yep. Putting it a bit deeper this time. Anticipation that he maybe has Miracle will go for the of farm. Backup. Oh my god. It's looking a little bit scary. This is going to be just a walk a forward. In a bit. Hits him with the scream. Hands going on the high ground. Hi, how's it Whoop. going? <laughs> Bops him with a coconut and a maledict, and there's going to be the sonic wave and the kill. That's two times Miracle's going to get One dropped. One kill. Vizier on through, they're gonna go for fly here. It looks like the Lich will go down. And that is a string of two kills for Ex NIP. Excellent rotations from their oh, team. Top lane as well. Solid team. Trying to go. I don't know if he's gonna be able to get this kill here. He has TP coming in from not the Not as Lich easy doctor. without Lich. She should be fine, yeah. Without Lich, it's not easy for the Undying to get any solo pickoffs. But overall, early game wise, I think still still quite okay for the Alchemist. He's, he still has 20 CS, I think, against the 29 of the Undying, plus the Sacrifice. I think you'd be happy about that. One thing to mention, when Alchemist does kill the Undying Zombies, he actually gets Grievous Greed Gold from that, which is kind of an interesting <laughs> little even mechanic. The, even if the, you kill the Vino Wards or Observer Sentries, you get the gold. Era um. bot. A second bottle. This one will be for him. <laughs> it's on the way. <laughs> has he been able to get the Bounty Runes? I haven't really seen him nah, leave the lane. he didn't leave so the lane. So. That's, a, that's a part of his game that has been nerfed down a bit, and I'm not seeing stacks yet on the side of NIP. Yeah. Oh, there's one little stack right here, but... Looks like they're going to be able to get to deny down on bot tower. This is the power of Jakiro, though. He's level 4 right now. Is about to be able to get another level in Liquid Fire and just tear down these towers in a second. Ice Path ends up connecting. Oh! Slam. Lots of damage from the Blade Tree, though. Not enough in that crit to be able to take him on down. And I think... Oh! oh with the Fissure! Well played from Jonas. Big Daddy flirting around there. I guess he was hoping to go right into an Omni, which he didn't seem to really have the mana for. <sighs> Quick reacting Echo Slam before the Blade Fury could go off. I think he just took too much damage from the Echo Slam there. Yeah. If, you, if he spin early enough, I think that kill should be an easy, straightforward kill there. Because he just didn't anticipate that. Jonas you know, would be quick to slam the R button down <laughs> when he recognized that. He did There's just few get outs six too. Like right now, he's only at halfway to seven. He, he got that, I think, that pretty closely with those creeps that ended up getting taken out. That's one of those kind of situations. I know this wasn't the case this time, but when people were like, oh, what's the purpose of even holding a bounty rune bottled up to get the extra trickles of gold? Well, yeah. if you're able to quick burst up to level six, throw your opponent off, and you can see even there without a bounty rune, you can start suspecting or respecting the amount of XP yeah. that this Earthshaker actually had. I think I think that's actually a really good point. Like sometimes we see it, it's a small thing, but sometimes it matters when you catch your opponent off guard. Mm. Looking to go for era here. Oh, come in. Omni slash. Sweeping in, there it goes. There's gonna be fine. He's trying to regen up with the ult, but it's not gonna be enough. Level three, three will finish him off. The damage is real. It's ridiculous. They are gonna get the return kill here on the moon. Crits here now, though. Beautiful ice plath connects onto three. Hanskin's the only one not caught. He's trying to catch up, but he has no way. To Man, get the that catch ice armor. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was annoying for the queen of pink. Yeah, he does that little bit of slow, and oh, Dyer's courier gets picked off. Bottom lane. Uh, I think it's the Queen's uh, Oblivion star. But why was it, uh, it was he left here while he TP'd? He TP'd from bottom. Oh, and the creeps took it down. Uh -oh. That's a misplay. Well, it looks like the Shadow Fiend's going to be able to pick on up his Wraith Band right now. No, this is going to be his Power Treads. I was a little bit confused about that one. Does have the Regen Rune as well, so should be able to farm on up pretty quickly here. Be ready for the next goat. So you think that this is definitely going to be a mechanism picked up on the Shadow Fiend here for this next little bit. After yeah, Aquila. I think it should be should be a mechanism. It just suits the way the lineup works. Actually, Undying's going for the mech. Never mind. Oh, Undying's actually going for the mech. So SF should be going for I guess SMY. 
more stats heavy, I guess. Oh, it, a fighter buildup, possibly yeah. Helm of the Dom. Yeah, because Undying yeah, had a really good start, so he's able to actually get the mech on a really good timing this game. So, allowing the Shadow Fiend to actually build into a more carry type of item build. I guess that is something that they're, well, not super limited on. Jug's pretty good at that as well, and being able to build into it. We've been seeing him go for the SNY Scotty type stuff as well. It sort of reminds me of what you were talking about earlier with the power curves and how that plays into this type of draft yeah, against I an think alchemist. the Juggernaut will actually build the drums first be because you want to have the movement speed for the spin. He's maxing the spin first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is he finishing his drums? Is that a drum recipe? Yep. Yeah. This is the same build he went for when I watched his game. Drums and then he goes for SMY after. Can't help but feel like though, as a smoke does come in from NIP, Tombstone level four ready to go. Vision from the high ground. Looks it's like they might get the catch on the miracle as he tries to sweep in. He's going for a desperate requiem. Not gonna be the biggest of damage and NIP. Do get a nice little catch. Miracle out of position. Will force the rest of Mucky business back or not? Big omni Daddy's slash. like I might Omni someone, but NIP are a little too clustered. And a level one Omni would not do much here. <laughs> yeah, the, that actually slows down the push a lot. SF needs time to regain his souls, so time and space bought for their. Yeah, Alchemist to actually catch up. What I was gonna say is, I figured that, you know, once they get this mech on Moon Meander, hmm, is it at that point just five man go? He's at still least rid of all tier ones. Yeah, you want to take as much towers as you can because he needs to get that arcane boost. I think he's gonna be mana staff with the mech. That's why you don't usually see Undying's going for the naked mech. You need to stop by for arcane boost. Yeah. Unless someone else on your team actually gets the arcane mm, boost. Which is tranquils on crit and fly. Yeah, flies, and literally you want tranquils as well. If only you can actually use Share, sacrifice. sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. that that'd that'd play. <laughs> Do you think that'd be too much on the hero? I mean, that, I think Carl's out of the job. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess that, like that, that would remove Kotal's usage. No. Uh, no. Nobody wants that. <laughs> It's too good as it is already, an ability being able to give yourself the mana, but more importantly, deny the XP for your Lich opponent. Gonna so give you. Nice. Well played. That was actually pretty good. Yeah. Nice stop, winner. That was a winner. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Back at Miracle, after the turn of getting caught off of that top lane, he's still trying to play a bit of catch-up. It's been a hard game for him. 0-3-0 zero, zero on his Shadow Fiend. I know it's not really too much on him at this point to peak. He has time to build up and farm. I mean, if you look at the Alchemist timing, he's already been nerfed down a bit. He's been jungling for what feels like the past four minutes or so. Definitely not as scary as what we saw from Big Daddy in the last game. So he has a ways to go. Gets the medallion build up here, so. I like this one. He's not going to be able to get to the Radiance sort yeah. of unganked, and I think yeah. that this is a nice little pickup This is here. going to allow him to actually approach another timing, which is maybe an earlier rush with uh, their lineup with the medallion. Should he follow this up with a Blink or Shadow Blade? Mm, it's hard to say what he wants, though. Yeah. I think there's no set builds for the Alchemist this game. Everything depends on how the game is going. Right now it's prepare for possible team fights if you're looking to defend towers because monkey business are not going to be letting up a whole lot. Witch Doctor is not going to have ulti for this night. Oh, he actually might with this last range creep and the other melee one going down in a second. Yeah, he gets it now. Nice. And they were away from the lane. They're going to come in with a Winter's Curse and a Death Ward to take down Moon Meander here. Sonic Wave and he does go down. Moonman are going to be stepped off from getting that mechanism. Omni Slash flies out on the Seal Kid. Oh, and the Chain Frost is going to blast him. He does end up going down the Macropire Burn. I love that against the Cold Embrace. Big Daddy, though, is going to get caught and taken down. A two-for-one oh, trade fly. They missed, but he gets him with the Echo Slam. Oh, heartbreaking there for your Lich. After the missed Fissure, which was probably more to get the block off. Fly's not going to be able to TP away, and it's going to be a trade for NIP. A three-for-one. Very, very solid execution for NIP, getting that. That was really crucial for them to be able to have access for the death ward at the, which, uh, at the top fight. That was really crucial for them. So the team fight, obviously, victorious this time in defending the tower, the team fight lineup. Well, and the thing about this also is this is the point in time where you would really hope to be able to defend it or push on down these towers of your monkey business. Yeah. Obviously, the mech not quite up, but being able to take out oh, that they, Undying they at the start of the fight. They still don't have the mech on Undying? They just got it right now. Oh, uh, that they was... He probably might have survived that, right? If yeah. He had oh, yeah. That's all I was that like, oh, he might very, heal up here. I figured he would have had the mech at the time, but he did not. He has it now. And now they're back. This is like their third attempt trying to finish off this Tier 1 tower, which is great for NIP. The stall game is certainly something they need Ooh. to go for. This is a big problem. Earthshaker yeah. with Dagger. They still don't know that, but it's going to be a big problem. Yes. 
They did use Echo, but I think that they can... Oh, oh God. Jump no forward. Omni, though, so yeah. it's just kind of zoning back era here so they can secure this Tier 1. It looks like NAP are finally going to let that one go down, and they'll have to step off. With cooldowns, it's not their time to fight. But if they take another big team fight, like if they keep pressing in here onto a Tier 2 at some point in time, they're going to reveal that Blink Dagger with an Echo, and it could be devastating. Yes. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Shadowfin showed himself bottom though, so they actually saw the Sh Shadowfin bot and they know four heroes are top, so immediately Shadowfin realizes he's not safe because the opponent team actually knows that there's four heroes top. So he's just using his illusions to actually try and push out the lane. Mm. Yeah, looks like they're is his smoke. team smoked up? Yeah. NIP is now smoked. They're heading that way. Yeah, they oh, know he's alone. Oh, they could. I mean, he doesn't have an echo, which is they could actually might be for the benefit yeah. because he blinked echo here. Yeah, <laughs> that might have been terrible, but... Pretty good there. Lucky for Jonas, yeah, he did good, not have good an read. echo. <laughs> good read by the SF. And now, like look at this. Look at the retort. Monkey business smoked up. And they're going to see if they can flank and catch him out from behind. Tombstone, mech. Radiant Let's go. Let's do this. Time to party. SF actually got caught. Oh, yeah. They went in from behind, and they caught him. And that forces the TPs out from monkey business. Not going to be able to finish off the SF. Miracle goes in the corner, hides out. Limp eats a big Omni Slash. Will end up being dropped and... Now Seal Kid, NIP, on full retreat mode here. They're going to be able to catch Seal Kid, it looks like. And they will claim two names. Hmm, Roshan? Are they actually strong enough for Roshan? Yeah, probably not. Uh, it doesn't look like they, yeah, they can't have they can't. him down. I mean, it would, Liquid Fire helps a lot doing Rosh, but I don't think that they was have comfortable really good. damage yet. By the Winter Wyvern to not toss out Winter's Curse. He a couple of times looked like he wanted to go for it, but being able to save that, it's a relatively long cooldown, 110 seconds. And if they do end up trying to push at this point, now they can defend it as you're moving forward. You got Echo Slam back up in a second on the Earthshaker. Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to defend a tower, and it looks like they're at least going to be able to trade here and apply some pressure to the top lane. We'll see if Monkey Business want to do anything about it. Moon can Low on mana. Mech on cooldown. Tombstone still on cooldown. Crit away. is going to get the catch on the arrow with an ice path here, but... He's low on mana, though. The jump was yeah. enough. I don't think they were intending to take a fight, but just maybe just kind of seeing if they can Still looking NIP really back. good for NIP right now. They are able to stall the push a lot, and as long as they are getting farm on the alchemists, that is fine for them. Which now he bumps it up into a solar crest here. They have the Roche potential. Hmm. I feel like he's actually going to go for the utility alchemists this game, because the main objective for them is to be able to defend their towers so you give your team fight composition and agonims like on the witch doctor mm -hmm. as long as you win the crucial team fights i think you're just gonna win the game so does he go for the ags next or does he need to build up first like some like an ac for extra Radiant's utility then go for the ags mm, maybe you go for one more item then start to pull ags ac could be a good yeah could be a good choice here against all the armor yeah, all the armor could be useful yeah. against yeah. sf and sf yeah we'll see if that's gonna be the choice or not here NIP though, happy as the game does seem stalled out a little bit. Monkey Business have put together this lineup that you'd think they probably want to be a bit more assertive here. I guess they got the first job done clearing out all the tier 1s, but eventually they are going to have to keep the push alive against NIP. I feel like Miracles is just a little bit separated from the rest of his team throughout this. Like, They're not really trying to group up as 5 at this point, and... Like you said, they're trying to. You'd imagine they. They don't to have a, a good sort of timing though, because all the lanes are constantly pushed out, and they want to make sure that they give away as little as possible when they're going for a five pin push. Like they need to be as efficient as possible, get the lanes pushed out, and don't lose as much gold and experience as possible. Uh -oh. Here we go. They've been spotted. Limp's gonna commit in, trying to go for crit, gets the scream, sour strike, but man, he eats one hell of an omni slash and goes down so fast. A one for one trade. Seal kid trying to TP away, not gonna make it out. Big Daddy gets the finish on that, and that here's a double kill for him. Jonas doesn't want to see anything else, so he quickly blinks uh, away. They, they were really just set. hoping that the Jakiro was all alone. Yeah, but that's not the case. Two times now, Monkey Business kind of rolled deep, come together, and are able to get a turnaround. Yeah, so this NIP. time round, they get the rush. This is a really big, big turnaround for them. They need this Aegis to be able to Jonas continue. Blink, Echo Steel, Ooh, Jonas Blink, Echo Steel, though. Jonas Blink, Echo Steel, though. They don't have vision, though, so it's tough. They're gonna have intuition. Quick. Go. Look at, look at Big Daddy. He's going to go for it? He's oh. even going for the safe play. He spins before yeah. the ocean goes yeah. down. That's smart. really smart. Shadowfiend's going to be able to get that one. Agonim's, excuse me, Aegis up on him now. and Definitely a potential to push on down. He's got the Sanjin Yasha up as well. Mech is up on the Undying. Ready to push on in the lane. Just need to make sure that they're all out. NIP looking for a pickoff here. Ooh. 
You wanted it. Monkey business now have to know that there's some sort of ward in the area. <laughs> they were able to read the farm there. Looks like they won't get the scout for now, but monkey what? business got to be confident. They get the Aegis. What is the SF going for the next item? Is he going BKB? SMY for now, but we'll see mm. if he goes Maybe for the BKB. Maybe that's Scotty. Yeah, Scotty. BKB doesn't help against... I mean, it helps against Ashaker, so I guess it's still value if you go BKB this game. Not an appropriate game to go back for a Helm of the Dominator? No, uh, he needs as much stats as possible because mm. they want to pick as fast as possible to end the game. Mm-hmm. Looks like he gets the hammer for now, but oh, DD rune. Yeah, BKB be for sure. Up. I don't think Down he goes top, but I don't think Era is going to oh. go for it. He is busy he top lane, himself. stunning himself. Galen <laughs> <laughs> falls in. Shadow Strike will connect, but he gets caught with the Yules. Crit's got a Yules, and he's going to get the catch on the limp. He goes down, able to get the Sonic Ooh. Wave. Follow up from Jonas is a big Echo Slam. Can they get the finish? Big Daddy's still alive. That ward. Keeping him sustained and well, but look at this. The turnaround comes. Moon Meander goes into zombie form, and they just begin to shred apart right now. NIP drop one by one. Moon gets a double kill for himself, and Miracle's like, I'm here, fellas. <laughs> Give me those creeps. Oh, he is ready to go. Three for one up. trade. Big Man. fight. Unfortunately, they didn't have follow-up after the Echo Slam. That was, that was a really huge Echo Slam, but not oh, enough Winter's damage. Curse. No Witch Doctor Ward in the area. This yeah. is really devastating. They managed to repel off the damage with the Soul Rip and the yeah, Healing Ward, they down. took a while before they actually removed the Healing Ward out of the equation, so that actually did a lot of work. It kind of feels like that's the moment that they were waiting for throughout this whole game to be able to have, you know, the rest of the team there to back on up your teeth here against the Echo Slam, and now they're just going to be able to push this on in and take down a couple of Tier 2s with it. I don't think that they're going to be able to break high ground with this, but probably at least take the mid one and Maybe yeah. go for more. They're going to be able to secure map control, maybe get a gem after they remove the tier, the tier 2 towers. So it's still looking really good for a monkey business because that, yeah. was, that was really close to being a disaster if they got blown up by the echo. Well, they've got really great vision. The ward's already deep in the jungle up on that high ground there. And tier 2 towers soon to fall. Did end up glyphing it up, but the DD's still on the Shadow Fiend ever so slightly longer. Greaves are also up on Undying now, so no more mana problems. No more orchid problems as well. Yep. That's big. He just actually for another two minutes mm. here. High ground. High ground siege is coming. Radiant yeah, Mark Echo being on cooldown. It's 20 They seconds. still have Death Ward. They still have Winter's Curse. Yeah. I would advise NIP don't commit those until maybe they Echo's ready, ready and they really have good. everything they got. Have to be really good with that position. They split everyone up. The gotta get rid of that ward too. That's canceling out the asset spray. Miracle separated from the rest of the team. Fissure is down. There's oh. the Maledict. That's the Aegis, so they don't want to commit too much to pop that first life. We'll get the stun. Ice Path connects Man, on the, the healing skin. ward is doing so much work. It's, yeah, it's totally negating this acid spray. Man, do you even want to actually use Octane Bunch just so you can actually kill the healing ward? I think I, think I, would, con I, would, I would definitely consider it. It's yeah, the pumping up. Well. Yeah, oh, pumping up. I get the chance. Omni Slash, and they will just chop apart the Ice Cube. Winter Wyvern will be going down. Rax is now exposed. NIP. No buyback on her either. Winter's Curse not used. There's the Fissure separating again. They're on the verge of getting bumped down in the lower bracket if they're not going to have a way to answer this. But Miracle, confident, striding on in. Has the Aegis still. And a serious right click here. Look at him. Bump down limp. They're Queen of Pain. Going to be forced to blink back to safety. And they are happy to even stand in this acid spray and continue to chunk down and demolish this NIP base. Another healing ward dropped down as well. Just continued sustain here. This juggernaut pick making it work for them. Yeah, the acid spray is not doing anything. It's a level four acid spray and you wouldn't even think Miracle's getting hit by it. It's off now, but here comes another block of the fissure. Yeah. Age is still in hand. He gets the healing wall. There's down. a hand skin ult, but it's going to get canceled quickly. Moon Manor does get hit from the Sonic Wave, but it's not going to be enough to finish him off. And Miracle, in the meantime, gets another kill on the Winter Wyvern. Still no buyback. She's going to be dead for this next fight. Echo oh, there's, there's the you. Echo. It's a beautiful Echo from Jonas. Oh, my. Can they finish him off, though? Moon keeping everyone alive with a beautiful Soul Rip, and it might not be enough. Another big echo, but they just can't get the finish on these heroes. Miracle is going to come back with the second life, and, and Moon will pull out the sustain. If, if only the Y1 was not yeah. dead, that would have been a team wipe for them. Oh, Hanskin falls as well. And I think that they're real happy after that echo to just get away with only the Lich dying there. Oh, of course. That is ridiculous. Oh, stun dodge. It's going to end up hitting there in the end, but...
My God, that Echo Slam looked beautiful. <laughs> the stars, unfortunately, just don't quite align here for NIP. It's the second time I mean, where they have a beautiful start, but if they had just that one extra bit of ammunition, could have made the difference there. Too bad, 4v5, not going to work. No. One man down. Huge gold swing as well. You take a look at this graph, really starting to favor them. Oh, man. Put on your hiking boots. Oh, boy. Well... Something had to be done, though. You can't just allow a Shadow Fiend to freely seed your base. So, you know, Wyvern has that long-range splinter blast. She used it to be able to kill the Helion Ward as well. But yeah. at that point, the, a lot of the work was already done in terms of being able to get the siege down, the Tier 3 tower down, and the melee racks was following as well. And here comes the smoke. Oh, God. They're going to be able to find them in the jungle here as well. This could be a real big problem. Could be the finishing blow here if this goes... Very nicely for business. They come up the hill. They're going to get the spot. A quick Yules. They respond with a Winter's Curse. Jonas is going to dish out the Fissure. And now the Sustain comes out. Miracle unleashes a Requiem. Does not look like it's going to connect too much. They will spot out Seal Kid. He pulls the attention away from the rest of his team, but they commit three over for Jonas. And they will right-click him down. Hanskin, please don't come close to me. Let my ward stop you. Oh. No, it's not going to be enough, Jonas. Both him and it looks like Hanskin will be going down. Maledict onto several, so that was pretty solid, but Jakiro actually has a Blink Dagger now as well, so has the initiation potential with the Yules set up on into the Ice Path. You take a look at that fight recap, 2400 gold swing, but the big thing as well is that, take a look at these heroes, no buyback across the board at this point for the Dire, and it's kind of looking like it might be the end here for Nip in the upper bracket. Monkey business move into the top. Doesn't seem like there's going to be much to stop him here. Era will do his best with the Acid Spray. Earthshaker will be back in 20 seconds with an Echo ready to go. Winter's Curse, though, will be ready for at least another 20-some-odd seconds after that. I don't think it's going to be in the cards here for NIP. Monkey Business put together a wonderful draft. Game number one, execute it. Same with two. I mean, it seems like they they have a game plan and they continue to set it in motion. Oh Limp again God. eats the Omni Slash. Big Daddy has just been on him this game with that R click. So many zombies as well. Yeah, it's it's been a really rough one so far for that Queen of Pain. I mean, you were able to get a decent start, but six and four, not necessarily the best. I think that this is largely just because of the role that she had to fill. She had to do so many things across the map, and Monkey Business was just ready for it consistently. Mm -hmm. This was her getting that bottle at the start as well. Just. Even then, lucky business were prepared. Well, Roche going to be up again in a couple of minutes here as well. Do you think that they try and push down this tier two and then maybe wait for Roshan, or are they comfortable uh, pushing that's forward? The safe, that's the, obviously the safest play, but I think they are at the moment strong enough to go. But can't really blame them if they actually want to wait for the Roshan. It's a big event. You don't want to allow any sort of opportunity for the opponent to come back into the game. I mean, I... I don't fault NIP for calling GG yet. They still have that team fight. The dream is still there. If they can somehow pull it all off, at least once, mm. they could get a huge net worth swing their way. Maybe it'll be step one. But if it fails again, I'd imagine they will not be giving it another oh no, attempt. They saw them running in. Hey! Oh, oh, Big Daddy goes right Hi in. Guys. Pops Manta. <laughs> is there a party in here? We're going to throw out the Ice Path. We'll catch on Jonas. Look at this. Beautiful two-man curse comes out from Seal Kid. Jonas going to walk in, gets out the Echo, and they will get the kill onto wow, the two. That, that was such a... It's a lot of commitment to take down only two, though. Miracle's still fine. Look at this. They're going to spot him out in the high ground. Limp looking to sweep on in. Will go down even though he holds Embrace, but now the three of them will quickly muscle down Seal Kid. Here comes the rest of Trouble. You may have gotten two, but Monkey Business are still just that much farmed ahead. As Moonmian are flexing off his new Crimson Guard, Miracle is the diesel engine who just right clicks everyone apart and NIP will lose four all day. A triple kill for Miracle and this starts with NIP getting the jump on two. And already up in the base, all of the lanes pushed in, tier four towers go down. We don't get to see the GG because of a spectator bug, but <laughs> yeah, don't worry. There's no <laughs> bad manners there. I'm sure just <laughs> GG's had been called. We were not able to see it. And with that, NIP will now be facing Alliance in the lower bracket final. One team will not be continuing on. The other one will secure their also spot in the Frankfurt Majors. But guys, congratulations. Monkey Business will be the first team out of Europe to go to Frankfurt. Lesson of the series, never try to outgreet Alchemist. Oh, there we go. Deep thoughts, wise words from Winter, as always. You know, well, yeah, Monkey Business, game one, they show what you could be, what you could do with an Alchemist, and game mm. two show what you should do against an Alchemist. Yeah. So... 
That's going to be a bit unnerving for a lot of the other teams to watch with this new Alchemist meta coming before us. Do you think that this is an answer that you can consistently have, or was it that Monkey Business were able to execute it well enough? Like, if you have this same draft on Monkey Business and then maybe another team, would they be able to be able to stand up to it? I think execution is one thing, but if you talk about Alchemist, Alchemist is also a very flexible hero. If you put Alchemist against this type of lineup, he's going to be under a lot of pressure. You can always play the Alchemist differently like what Era did. You don't have to be greedy. You can go for the utility build. They won the first few team fights mm. because they executed much better. But then the, the team fights after, they just didn't have the follow up. Echo Sam's were on point. But they were either late, uh, the other team, his teammates were late to the field, or someone is dead. Yeah. So they didn't get the full team fight yeah. going on for them. It's a shame too, because NFP look like they're always able to execute yeah, very they, well with what they got. I, I but think they, they don't have everything they should. I think they yeah. made a really good adjustment in the draft. They realized that they were going to get pressured with the under with the alchemist. Then they transitioned their draft into very team fight focus to defend against the tower pushers of monkey business. So I think they were just really unlucky in certain points of the game. They didn't get the follow up needed for the echo stem. Otherwise, I felt the game could have easily swung to their favor. Oh, well, good for Monkey Business. Again, congratulations. They'll be securing their trip to Frankfurt. But we get to now see the all or nothing of Alliance and NIP. Coming up next, we'll find out. Round two of the Swedes. Match. Round uh -oh. two. Swedes versus Swedes. Should be a hype one here. I'm Kyle Guy. That's Winter. That's Lyrical. We'll be back in just a moment for more Dota action. See you soon.